Oh, we are back, and this time we're going to show you some things that TikTok made me eat. Keto edition. Welcome back, local Tarians, and it's time to show our keto love. TikTok made me do it, I swear. So let's see what kind of delicious keto things that they've got brewing because there's some amazing TikToks out there, and every time I watch them, I get so hungry. So let's go. Yummy, 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 meal time. Yummy, 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 meal time. Yummy, 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 meal time. Off of the ground, bitches love the ground. Here's a lean packed keto friendly ramen I made today. So good. I'm using some of this Amy ramen as the base. They're like 31 grams protein, nine net carbs, and they cook up pretty much like ramen. So I added a couple of cups of water, put it in the microwave, strained it out, and then added another cup, separated the noodles, added the flavoring packet, mixed it up, put it back into the microwave for about a minute or so, and then I topped it up with some stuff because it's all about the toppings. Added some mushrooms, fresh herbs, some hot peppers, chicken for a little bit more protein, and of course, you gotta have the jammy egg. It's not ramen without it. And guys, it was pretty good. It was really, really good, filling, and highly recommend. You're gonna wanna make some of these rich avocado chocolate brownies. So good. Gonna start by mashing up half a large avocado, six tablespoons of coconut oil, sea salt, add in some vanilla extract, and then I'm using this Lacanto powdered milk fruit sweetener. I prefer these since they mix in a lot easier. Give that a good mix. Add in about a, one and a half cups of almond flour, one cup of cacao powder, two eggs, and give everything a really good mix until everything is mixed in really well, like so. And then we're gonna add my favorite parts, some roasted hazelnuts, some Lucanto chocolate chips. Feel free to use however much or as little as you want. Put an eight by eight sheet in the oven for about 25 minutes. And the key thing here is you wanna let it cool, slice into it, make them as big or small as you want, and check that out. So good. 
The other day I made these for my brother and he said they were the best wings he's ever had. So I'm going to show you guys how I make garlic parmesan chicken wings. I want to start off with super dry chicken wings and then I coat them in about a teaspoon per pound of baking powder, a good amount of Danos, a big pinch of salt, mix all that up and then coat them in some oil so they don't stick. I use a lined baking sheet with parchment paper and bake them for 30 minutes at 375. After 30 minutes, take the wings out, flip them over and crank the heat up super high or on broil just till they're super crispy. So good. If you try them, let me know what you think. You know when you make something new for dinner and then you want to make it the next day because it turned out so good? I've been obsessed with making these super easy meatballs. I start by mixing together a couple eggs, parmesan cheese, a couple big spoonfuls of spicy danos, and a little bit of heavy cream and mayonnaise to keep them really moist. I mix all that up and then add in the ground beef, mix it together, form balls, and then I sear them for a couple minutes on each side. I finish baking them in the oven in a pan with some marinara and I top them with cheese. So good. If you try them, let me know what you think. So I've never been a huge fan of pasta, but I do love chicken alfredo, and this sure does hit the spot. Start with about half a pack of bacon while the bacon's cooking, cut a bunch of chicken breasts down the middle to make them a little bit thinner. Then I took the bacon off, added some butter and danos. That's all I'm going to cook the chicken in. It makes a beautiful herb crust just like that. Then I'm going to steam some broccoli on the side while I get started on my alfredo sauce inside, which is super simple, only a couple ingredients, and I'm going to leave those in the comments. If you guys try this, be sure to tag me and let me know what you think. Stop right there and look at how gorgeous this is, and it's super healthy. So you're going to start with a half a cup of Greek yogurt. You're going to add some mustard, red pepper flakes, paprika, and lemon juice. Mix it all together and set that aside. Now you're going to take some boneless, skinless chicken breast, pat them dry, season them up with kosher salt, pepper, garlic powder. Now you can coat it in the yogurt mixture, then dip it in some grated Parmesan. Now you're gonna bake it at 375 for 35 minutes or until your chicken hits the temp of 165. Slice it up, I threw it on top of romaine lettuce with some sliced cucumber, put some hot sauce on there and it was delicious. Like and follow for more. Let me show you a super easy vinaigrette to make that is really good a couple of ways. So this has pepperoncini brine in it, and this is going to make it nice and tangy, and there's some coarse black pepper in here that against the tanginess of that brine is a really, really good combination. At the end of this video, you're going to see a list of ingredients that you can screenshot. And yeah, I know I'm making a mess. It's totally okay. Just add everything to a container and give it a good shake. This is an awesome vinaigrette for salads, for vegetables. You can actually use this to marinate chicken and it's really, really good. If you try, let me know. And don't forget to like and follow for more healthy, keto, and low-carb recipes just like this one. Who does a chicken sandwich that all the fast food places are making? Let me show you how to do a healthier version. So what I have here is some buttermilk left over from when I made the pickle butter, but you can use light cream, heavy cream, whatever you want. Season up that cream with all the seasonings listed here. Don't be shy, put in your chicken and let it marinate. Now another bowl, go ahead, add King Arthur keto flour, some arrowroot starch, and the same seasonings you use to season up that cream. Then dredge your piece of chicken, drop it in some hot avocado oil, you want it to be about 350 degrees, cook it till the internal temperature hits 165, add it to some lavish bread with some sliced pickles, and you're done. Note that I only made one here, so that reflects in my ingredients. Just add the amount accordingly if you're making more. Like and follow for more recipes. Chorizo stuffed mushrooms with goat cheese. You're going to start with large white mushrooms. Clean them, save the stem, and scrape out the gills. Now brush them with olive oil, set them aside. Cut up a shallot, cut up the mushroom stems, and saute those in a little bit of olive oil with some kosher salt till they soften up. Then add some parsley, mix it all together, then set that aside. Cook down your chorizo after you've taken the casing off. I like to use a fork to get it nicely minced up. Mix it all together and stuff those mushrooms. Now I'm going to top it with goat cheese. You can use any kind of cheese you want here. Cheddar, pepper jack, whatever you like. Bake it at 400 for 20 minutes and that's it. Like and follow for more recipes. 
If it's one thing I can't stand, it's wasting food. I had a head of cauliflower in my fridge that was starting to go bad, so I'm just going to take a knife and scrape off all the brown bits, chop up the cauliflower into bite-sized pieces. At the bottom of a cake pan, I just brushed on some sauce, added my cauli, drizzle it with olive oil, top it with sauce, mozzarella cheese, and your favorite pizza toppings. I'm going to use pepperoni, banana peppers, and red pepper flakes. Bake it at 400 for 30 to 45 minutes. It's all depending on how crunchy you want that cauliflower, and you have yourself a cauli pizza bowl. It's like a lazy way to make a cauliflower pizza. If you try, let me know, like, and follow for more recipes. Let's make a super yummy, quick, and easy dessert using Upside Down Bakery's Double Fudge Brownie Mix. These are great made on their own in the microwave, but today I was going for a whoopie pie type dessert. So I added a little bit of water to the mix, stirred it up, then added half the batter to my mini waffle maker. Let that cook up, then I just repeated with the rest of my batter. Then for the filling, I just mixed a little cream cheese, powdered sugar replacement, and vanilla. Then just smooshed them together. It was super easy. This dessert came together in about five minutes and tasted amazing. How I like my coffee, and I like it sweet, so here's how I make it. We use a vanilla hazelnut brew. I like about two and a half pumps of the caramel fudge waffle cone skinny syrup. Then I like to add some of this gingerbread cookie flavor god seasoning, along with some heavy whipping cream. Then I just froth it up, and that's it. And you guys are always making fun of me for my mug, but I love it. It's supposed to look like a little purse. I got it from the France Pavilion in Epcot about two years ago, and I think it's adorable, so lay off me, would ya? Anyways, that's my coffee. Chicken salad is definitely one of my favorites. So today let's make my maple ginger chicken salad. Start with some chopped cooked chicken, carrots and celery, green onion, of course you gotta have some mayo, some chopped almonds, I'm using these garlic herb kind, you can use plain, coconut aminos or soy sauce, sugar-free maple syrup, ground ginger, garlic powder, and salt and pepper. Mix that all together, and you've got this perfect balance of savory and sweet. I serve mine in lettuce wraps or in a bell pepper. Enjoy! I've seen a bunch of people make different versions of this stuffed Italian sausage dish. Here's mine. In a sprayed baking dish, add a chopped red bell pepper, small onion, and a tablespoon of minced garlic. Then I'm using this That's Amore seasoning from Shore Smoke. It's a delicious blend of herbs and spices, perfect for an Italian dish. Now, I'm using bratwurst in this recipe. I would prefer Italian sausages, but I didn't have any on hand. I also see a lot of people use string cheese inside these, but I use a baby bell cheese cut in half. Then I top with a cup of sugar-free marinara and more That's Amore seasoning. Bake at 400 degrees for 40 to 45 minutes. This is so easy to just throw together and pop in your oven. And it's super tasty too. Enjoy. Wow, guys, what's cooking? All right, guys, I know now we are getting ready to go get something to eat, right? Because we got to all be hungry. Make sure you leave us a comment down below. Follow these wonderful TikTok folks. And make sure you follow us on TikTok too. Here is the information for all of our platforms. Make sure you leave us a comment and let us know who your favorite TikToker is and what you're cooking tonight. All right, guys, peace. We'll catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with all your friends. And hit that bell so you know when we have a new video.